Good morning. Welcome to the channel. This is Lunar Goddess Tarot. I'm Sarah and I'll be your intuitive guide and your reader today. So for today, we have a journey through the Oracle cards. I'm using the Work Your Light Oracle, the Yogic Path Oracle, and the Divine Animals Oracle. We're going to look into the energies. June has a ton of light codes associated with it. So, you know, on the surface, this may seem or look to be very, very exciting, positive right off the bat. What I want to warn you guys about is, and you know, this is, I'm not here to be Debbie Downer, but I'm here to deliver the truth. The light codes can be quite, um, they can feel quite heavy moving through the carbon DNA, the carbon body. So as we're upgrading our bodies, as we're moving to this crystalline structure, it can feel quite challenging on the physical body. So you may be challenged this month as the light codes are infused, as a light, the light codes take their hold within the physical body, the physical structure, the physical DNA. So this can feel and look like lethargy, fatigue. We are in the midst of a pretty massive ascension flu right now. So many of you are experiencing ascension flu symptoms. Um, many of you are gonna be hungry and then nauseous and then hungry and nauseous. Um, I talked a lot about what's happening on my last video, which was from two days ago. And I also talked about the importance of the Saturn retrograde, which is gonna be here, it's here now, and we will be dealing with the Saturn retrograde energy for four and a half months until almost end of October. So definitely check that out. I am offering, in addition to my North Node readings, I am offering Saturn retrograde readings personally for you. So you can find out, okay, what is going to be happening for me? What is the theme for me with a Saturn retrograde? What does this mean? How is this going to pan out? How is this going to affect me? We'll pull some cards. We'll look at some of the astrology. So I'm offering those two readings at this time. I am not offering twin flame readings. I don't know if I will offer those again. I'm really being called to move away from those readings and to start offer offering more readings based on how I can help you individually, how I can assist your growth, the soul's growth. Um, this My mission is, is shifting and changing, as is, I'm sure, a lot of yours. I'm here to help you discover your mission, to help you recalibrate your direction if need be and to help you understand yourself better knowing that when you understand self and get right with self that's when you truly move forward on this journey um, the feminine is really being guided to move forward not look back while the masculine continues to deal with some some residual anger some fears in leaving and exiting the matrix um, i have a lot more to say about that um, but for now i want to get into the card portion of the reading if you guys are looking on my website, you will see a description of the North Node readings under the offerings page. You just have to scroll down. However, I don't have the Saturn retrograde readings up there yet, and I probably won't until I get back from vacation. I leave tomorrow, um, and I'll be out for a week. So if you don't see it on the website, don't panic. I and Also, the North Node reading says out of stock. Everything says out of stock on the website. I'm we're moving some things around behind the scenes there on the website and I currently um, cannot accept payments. I'm dealing with a payment processor issue. So if you'd like to book a North Node reading or a Saturn retrograde reading, you'll have to reach out to me and my email is listed below. And right now, just so you guys know, I'm booking into the first week of July. Okay, so let's get started here on what is happening and i'm actually being guided to go right into the divine animals oracle so we're going to ask for the assistance and the protection of first of all archangel michael who i work with he is my dude and also the angels the archangels and the assistance of my guides my highest self and as well as the assistance of the collective's highest self please protect this reading protect myself and everyone watching this reading protect our energies and assist us in our mission paths here. And you guys know that even if you're on a twin flame journey, okay, even if you have that divine counterpart, your mission is much bigger than that physical union. I have to drive this point home. My guides are very adamant about that right now, that we need to focus on self, completely turning away from the physical union. It doesn't mean you have to... <clears throat> Um, it doesn't mean abandonment of the twin. It doesn't mean you have to be cruel or mean or even disrespectful. It just means you put yourself first. 
If you're not sure what that looks like or sounds like, we can do a coaching session. I do also offer those. We can look into the what that means for you and for your connection. And in addition, some of you work with Holly. Some of you receive healing sessions. Many of you work with Holly and myself, which seems to be most beneficial. And um, you know, we come from different angles and we can help clean up the connection. We can help to um, provide the guidance and the direction that you're seeking at this time. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this card. So this is the energy of release. This is the Jaguar energy. There's an energy of surrender here as well. So this is the feminine energy. So the feminines, you are experiencing something that is likely something that you've been wanted for quite some time but potentially weren't able to reach for whatever reason. There were obstacles, there were blocks. Um, but this is about releasing what is no longer needed. And I feel like at this time, there's a huge release right now of the counterpart. There's a huge release of the label collectively. I've been talking about it in videos for quite some time. I've released the label myself. Um, you may see the label on my, my titles just so people know how to find me, but you're gonna see less and less of that as I take the leap of faith and branch out and expand what it is that I'm offering. You're gonna see a lot more astrological videos. You're gonna see how these transits are affecting us collectively. Um, you know, I'm delving more and more into astrology and the science of it, and I'm also delving more and more into this connection with self and what that means and the true meaning of, you know, the true meaning of wholeness within, the true meaning of this inner union of the feminine and the masculine. And why this is so important that we achieve this first within instead of seeking these things outside of ourselves. So we have this beautiful energy here, Jaguar supporting the divine feminine. Um, and, you know, there is an ancient um, Jaguar goddess, and some of you may be familiar with her from, um, actually from Mayan culture. So if you've studied mythology of any sort, you may have heard of her. Her name is um, Shell, Ix Shell. And she's a fierce, fierce goddess. Um, she represents, you know, the divine feminine, the ferocity of the divine feminine. Um, she represents the, she's the goddess of fertility. She's the goddess of earth, of rain. She's the goddess of wholeness and abundance. Because anytime I think of fertility, I think of that round belly, something coming to completion, something being birthed. She's, she's honored far and wide. And she is the goddess that um, the women of the Yucatan Peninsula would pray to or call out to when it was time for them to give birth, you know? So she protects the unborn. She protects the children. She protects um, what it is that we're giving birth to, what it is that's arising within us, whether that's a physical child, which I don't feel like that is for many of you. It could be for a small number of you. But in, you know, remembering this is a collective reading, this is more of an energy of fertility and abundance um, in, in general, like in terms of your dreams and your goals and in terms of your self-worth, okay? Um, hmm. There's a power, an innate power that we sense in Jaguar. She has this ferocity, but also this gentleness, this ability to, you know, she could kill with one pounce or she could um, take you under her spell, you know, with her, her seductive eyes. She, she has the propensity to really shift worlds and shift um, paradigms. So even though the Jaguar is extremely powerful, extremely, um, uh, majestic they are also this is why they're associated with both earth and rain they're they're land mammals right they're animals who mostly inhabit the land but they can also swim so it's it's this energy of the earth like taurus capricorn virgo energy and then the water scorpio cancer pisces we we see that when we are balanced with earth and water we have this beautiful balance of being grounded but also being able to tap into our emotions but not allowing the emotions to control us so she's she she can pulverize prey you know like i said she what what's happening right now and the way that i'm seeing this play out in the collective is 
is the feminine is pulverizing her demons, her, her ego. She's pulverizing those things that have constricted her, limited her, kept her, kept her at bay from her dreams and her goals, kept her from thinking that she was good enough or beautiful enough or powerful enough to do whatever it is that she wants to do and thinking that she's not supported by the universe. So that's starting to shift for her. Any negative aspects, you know, any negative mindsets, are all being washed away. So I would not be surprised if we have some rains, some pretty powerful rains coming through for some of you, depending on where you are in the world. But this is also an, a card of taking action feminine. You know how for a while I've been saying this is not a time to take action. June and July and August, these are action months. Okay, this is a time to take action and to move forward and to move your ideas into the physical world. So the moving from the mental space into the physical space. So let's check on the... Sorry, I've got cat hair. <laughs> Gather everywhere. Kitty kitties. All right, let's check on the divine masculine energy. Now, remembering this is the energy within yourself as well as the energy within the physical, the person you identify as the physical counterpart, you walking around in another body, having these different experiences. So we have horse freedom. So we have the surrender energy coming through for the feminine. And the masculines over here freeing themselves from the matrix. We talked about that in the introduction, right? Freeing themselves from what it is that's held them captive. They're coming out of captivity, guys. As they come, as the masculine comes out of captivity, they're having realizations about captivity, about the fact that nobody kept them there. They were keeping themselves in that space. They were keeping themselves locked up. They kept their heart locked up. They kept their soul locked up. They kept they kept their true dreams locked up because they didn't feel like they would be hurt. They didn't feel like they were important. Even if they were very important, and even if their egos are portraying that they're you know, full of themselves in the 3D, and you're like, there's no way, Sarah. My, my masculine's full of himself. He's all ego or she's all ego. Yeah, that's just a farce. That's just a facade that they were putting onto the world. The reality is that they were, they were in fear. The reality is that they weren't embodying their highest and truest self. So they're starting to do that. Again, what I want to emphasize is just because there is a shift in the internal world with the masculine doesn't mean you're going to see this reflected yet in the physical reality. Okay. So the 3d may or may not be shifting yet. So they're learning to be truly independent from their own beliefs and mindsets from their own mind. Okay. The negativity of the mind in particular, you know, the negativity that says I can never be with my feminine. I'm not good enough. Um, we're just, you know, life is supposed to be hard. Life isn't supposed to be good. We're not supposed to really experience joy. Life is about you work hard and, and then you play hard. And it's like, no, no, no. You don't work hard and then beat yourself up and, um, you know, go drinking or, or you know, destroying or, or engaging in these destructive habits, which is what the masculine energy has tended to do. Again, look inside yourself to see how this applies to your inner masculine as well, guys. So they're starting to make better decisions. They're starting to trust themselves more and they're starting to listen less to the um, agendas or the, the um, observations or, um, you know, like the advice of other people because they weren't able to make clear decisions in the past. They're also starting to individuate from their parents, okay? So whether, we talked about this in the last reading, there's there's definitely something shifting here for the masculines and the, the parents. So whether the parents were present or not, this is an energy of the masculine starting to come out of feeling like they have to people please. This is huge, huge. Lifetimes upon lifetimes of them feeling beat down mentally, feeling like they have to, um, you know, abide by the rules, feeling like they have to do right by others and then all the whole time doing wrong, you know, by themselves and, and not truly honoring themselves, not truly honoring what it is that they knew that they needed or they wanted. Okay. The, what, what's happened is the masculine historically has called, um, putting themselves first, they've called it selfish. Well, that's simply not the case. So their true power resides in their ability to know that they have a choice and know that this is their choice to make. This is pretty huge, guys. This is pretty huge um, because this is teaching the masculine collective how to, how to free themselves from the matrix. They don't even necessarily know it yet, but they, because, look, a lot of them are going to be starting to... Um, 
they're going to meet people who are more like the feminine. And what I mean by that is they're going to meet people who are more free, free thinking, free, free thinkers, um, more expansive in the way in which they see the world with different perspectives. They're going to start to realize, wow, I shunned my feminine or I pushed my feminine away because I thought we were too different. But in reality, they were jealous. They were envious of the way in which the feminine had that mental freedom and was able to truly create her own mindset and not relying on the mindset of society or what society expected. Let me give an example. Let's say you're a feminine, and I know that there's many feminines out there. Let's say you're past the age, I don't know, 35 is usually when they tell you, oh, you know, your eggs are dying and you can't have children at all. Oh, and you better find a mate and settle down and have the white picket fence bullshit. And so many of you did not do that. Many of you pursued career. Many of you pursued self-love. Many of you pursued a creative outlet. Many of you did whatever the hell you wanted, frankly. And what that did is they created a wave within your family because the family said, wait a minute, you opened a door, you opened a pathway for healing, for generational healing. You also open a pathway for the feminine collective. You also open the eyes of the masculine collective. You also scared the shit out of them by doing so. But in choosing your own path, in having that freedom, what you've done is you've taught your counterpart how to choose themselves. You've, you've chosen yourself the entire time. Maybe not the entire time, but you've chosen yourself for many, many years, many months, however long. And your counterpart is now starting to see, wow, you know, I was jealous, I was envious of the way in which my counterpart, my divine feminine did this, but now I realize that I can also do this. Where they didn't see an outlet before, where they saw a locked door, they're now seeing an open door. So as this, as this happens, as that door opens, um, they're going to be peeking their heads around the corner. They are still in a depression energy. They're quite angry and they're quite depressed simultaneously, which is an odd combination, um, but not, not really too odd if you think about it. And the divine feminine is just continuing to move forward. She's continuing to open new doors for herself. I want to state this. I want to make this clear because some of you will work with me. Some of you won't. Those of you who... who opt not to or aren't able to or for whatever reason it, our paths don't cross I want you to have this information if your masculine has ghosted you if your masculine has blocked you if they've hung up on you okay if they have in any way pretended like this isn't special you don't have a real connection this doesn't exist it's all in your head or they've downplayed your the work that you do in the world or, or the importance um, of the work that you do or in any way like belittled you in any way made you feel small I want you guys to understand a this was so that you could look within So that you could become even more powerful even more self-aware have even more self-love and self-acceptance It wasn't because they didn't love you. It wasn't to punish you It was actually to lift you up and to help you grow in ascent B that's a B they did not do it on purpose. They were, they were just like the separation is divinely ordained and divinely orchestrated and divinely timed. So are those comments. So are those physical actions. Okay. It's coming from a higher place. They can't even explain to you why they did it. I guarantee if you ask them, I don't know. I don't know. I just knew that I needed to go this way or do this thing or, or like I needed to just not, I needed to do what I did at the time and that they don't know why. Okay. So that's C. And then at lastly, D, do not take it personally. Do not take it personally. You're actually being protected. If the masculine isn't ready, if they're half-baked, do you really, really want them in front of you? Knowing that that could hinder your progress, knowing that that could hinder the work that you're supposed to do in the world to help, I don't know, tens, hundreds, thousands, millions, billions of other people, do you really want that being in the way of you reaching your your goal and you stepping into your mission and changing the fucking world? No. So let's get our thoughts straight. Let's get our heads straight and understand that if there's a separation happening, it's a blessing in disguise. Can we turn it around and be grateful for the time that we're being given, the energy that we're being given back? Look, if your masculine was in front of you right now, I'm telling you, you would be drained. I'm seeing it play out in the clients who work with their masculines. You would be drained. You would be on the receiving end of their anger, their depression. You would be blamed. You don't need that divine feminine. Free yourself as much as possible. And if you're in the path, the destructive path that the masculine's going through right now, 
stay out of the way as much as possible. If you work with them, if they're your boss, if they're a colleague, if in some way you have to be around them, find a way to protect yourself, okay? All right, so let's move on to another deck here. Just gotta check the time. Our AC isn't working properly. And it's July, it's June in Florida. So that sucks. Um, <laughs> so we are, we have an AC guy coming up here, um, which is most appreciated. The hottest months are August and September. So let's not get to that point, right? Um, it's like as if the divine feminine didn't have enough to deal with. Let's, let's like have her AC not work properly. Cool. Sounds good. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and move on to, I feel like I've been talking for a half an hour. It says 20 minutes. I call bullshit. <laughs> My guys are like, you talk, you talk so much, Sarah. <laughs> Oh, if you guys want some comedic relief, go and check out my, I just started a TikTok for fun, strictly for fun. I don't even know really how to use it. I need to learn from my nephews when I see them this week, but it is sunshine for you 31. That's my TikTok handle. It's super fun. I have videos about the twin flame journey on there, videos about Ascension. Um, I did some videos about the JD trial, my boy Johnny. So go ahead and check it out. Again, it's strictly for fun. It's humorous and I have a really good time doing it. One of my passions is comedy and making people laugh. So I am here to spread joy. That's why it's called Sunshine for You. I want to spread joy and sunshine into your life. I'll probably offend some people on the way, but I'm sure I've already done that on the channel. So I'm okay with triggering or offending people because really triggers heal. So obviously, you know, comedy, there's always going to be someone who's um, offended by, by comedy or by your type of comedy, but all in all, it's designed to make you happy and to bring you joy. So go and have a laugh if you wanna check it out. I appreciate the, the support. Again, I'm doing it strictly for fun. I don't even know, do people make money on TikTok? I don't even know how to do that. I don't even really know how to do them. I just do a video and then put some filters on there. <laughs> some music maybe. I really want to learn how to do like the side by side and I really want to learn how to do like a video where there's an animal and I can do an over over voice or whatever voiceover because I'm really funny. I, I really am good with animals, animal voices. And so if anyone knows how to do that, feel free to let me know. Give me a shout out, point me in the right Google page because I really want to do those. Okay. Anyway, I digress. So we have the energy of Bhakti. We have the energy of Thomas. So pretty, pretty awesome energies, if I do say so myself. So I feel like the energy of bhakti is referring to, okay, it's the divine feminine. Tapas is a divine masculine. Thank you. Okay. So let's take a look at the divine masculine. The divine masculine is in a place of self-discipline. Oh, I'm sorry. I knew that wasn't. No, this is the rest. This is the rest. Hold on. This is the nayama of rest. Hold on. Um, interesting. Wait a minute. Okay, hold on. I'm looking in the book because I'm a little bit confused. Um, density, dullness, and inertia. Okay. It's interesting because the feminine got the, the jaguar here, and then we have the masculine here, which looks like a white bangle tiger is what that looks like to me, which is pretty rare and also very, very beautiful. And he's resting, but this is honestly, guys, I gotta tell you, Holly has identified one of my cats as a DM, one of my cats as a DF, and then the third one is the guide. And the third one is actually um, special needs, Oliver. And he is the guide, and he's very empathetic. He's very sensitive. He picks up on energies. Um, all cats do, but he's, he picks up on the energies a lot. Now, Frankie, my orange striped ginger kitty, is a divine masculine. Charlie, who you guys have seen in previous videos, is a divine feminine. He comes in the kitchen, he'll hang out, you know, he likes to chat. And then like when friends are over and then the divine masculine is like, he's, he's depressed, he's angry, he's depressed. He wants to be touched, then he doesn't, then he wants to play, then he's hiding under the couch for no reason, right? It's a quiet house, but this is what he's going through. He's in a period of hibernation. Um, they are in the process of gaining their wings, of, of breaking free from the own restrictions of their mind and of society. These are, these are restrictions from eons and eons, guys. 
So as they do this, their body is sort of like, like think of the pause before you take the next breath. Think of um, the pause before you speak, if you're smart enough to take a pause before you speak, before you respond to something or someone. Think of the, the lines between the notes of a song, right? The pauses, the intentional pauses or the steps of a dance. There's always that moment where we have to stop and think. We don't have to stop and think about breathing, but if we're doing intentional breathing, we do, so we can intentionally pause. There's an intention, intentionality, I can't say that word, intention, anyway. We're intentionally, I probably made it up. We're intentionally taking a pause and taking a break, kind of meandering from the path, if you will. So they're rejuvenating their systems so that they can take action once they regain their freedom, or once they gain their freedom. Um, they're going to be in a period of rest. They're going to be in a period of nourishment. I'm telling you guys, this past week and the masculines were engaged in like, it was, it felt like a one big football party. It felt like they were all like, yeah, you know, like hyper masculine. It felt like they were trying to prove their masculinity. It felt like they were drinking soda, drinking ugh, alcohol and liquor. I mean, I could taste it. Holly could taste it. Um, other friends can, can taste it. It felt like they were just eating Cheetos and like Oreos and fried food. It was like gross. It was so gross. You could almost feel the oil dripping down your throat if you were connected to it. Now they're going to have to start to clean up their act because that made them feel pretty shitty. It was kind of like a last hurrah before they surrender, before they break free. Okay. So they're in this period, this cocoon or the bat cave as I refer to it, and they come out of this, uh, out of this place of stillness which is always followed by action. So the action will balance out the stillness. So let them be. I can't stress that enough, guys. Let them be. Um, don't interrupt the process. It's, it's, you're, gonna, you're going to get potentially stung, okay? It's kind of like if you were to interrupt a scorpion in its natural habitat, the scorpion will sting you. Scorpion will fucking sting itself, okay? Scorpion's wild. So don't get stung by the scorpion, guys. Stay out. Stay out of the scorpion's lair. Let them do what they need to do. Let them rest. But I do find it fascinating that both the DF and the DM have this big cat energy, this feline energy. Um, this is, uh, Jaguar is more of a masculine energy in some ways. This energy feels very feminine because it's a surrender. But these are both, you know, surrenders. These are both cards of surrendering just in different ways, okay? So the feminine energy, we're looking at the energy of bhakti. We're looking at the energy of devotion. What is it that you're devoted to, divine feminine? Um, where is it that you could be more devoted to self, devoted to your dreams, to your goals, devoted to others, devoted to your progress, devoted to your passion, devoted to your mission, devoted to your heart song, devoted to your soul's journey? I mean, we could, this goes on and on and on. Where is it that you could be more devoted to family, to friends, devoted to your clients, devoted to your career, devoted to um, the evolution of humanity, devoted to the, you know, the collective, the ascension, the journey that we are all on? Where is it that you could be more devoted? So the feminine's on this path, this higher path. She is um, at this time, I'm going to say it, okay, I don't mean this to compare it's gonna sound like a comparison. She is on a higher path. This is a higher vibration right now than, than the masculine counterpart. This is, again, internal and external, within and without. The external counterpart, the internal counterpart to you, you. Your feminine energy is climbing high. She's ascending rapidly. The masculine energy first has to take this intentional pause and hiatus before they can ascend before they can attain their freedom, before they can climb that ladder, before they can take action. There's a dedication to the divine that you're reaching divine feminine. And you'll be feeling this in your, your cells. You'll be feeling this in your bones. You'll be feeling this in your decisions. You'll be feeling this in the way in which you, like your perspective on the world. It's starting to really shift. The things that used to matter don't matter anymore. The, the, the people that matter will come forward. They'll, they'll re kind of cycle. They'll come back into your life. They'll come back into prominence. The um, beliefs and ideas that maybe you set aside, you know, for the sake of being a good girl or a good boy or following your parents' um, 
path or, or just trying to do right by others, those things are starting to really fall by the wayside as you're taking interest again in the things that really stir your soul. Taking interest in the things that stir your soul. That's an important line here in the reading. They want me to say it one more time. You're taking an interest in the things that stir your soul. So as your soul, your soul, your soul, as your soul is stirred, what is it that's coming up? Like what is it that's coming up to the surface to be acknowledged, to be redeemed? Okay. What does divinity mean to you? What is it that you're doing that makes you feel close to the divine? Um, is it gardening? Is it hiking? Is it being in the water and the ocean? Is it being with your animals, being with your children, being with family? Is it writing? Is it reading? Is it singing? Is it um, acting? Is it comedy? Is it um, taking care of wildlife? What is it? What is it that connects you to the divine, that connects you to something greater than yourself, that connects you to a greater path, a higher path than what it is that you can see with your own two eyes. This is where the divine feminine is currently, um, this is where she is currently like taking matters into her own hands, I guess is what they're telling me. Um, your path is really starting to become clear. I wouldn't be surprised if many of you are deviating off a one path going to another path, surprising yourself. The path you thought you'd take, you're taking a different path. I would not be surprised to hear that. Okay. All right, so let's see here. Divine Feminine, you are being initiated. There's a rite of passage. This is a very Six of Swords energy. If you were to look at the Six of Swords, let me actually pull that out in the tarot deck. They want me to show you the card. <clears throat> so we look at the Six of Swords. It might take me a minute, so... There are 52 cards in the deck. I feel like it's going to be about halfway through. Seven of Swords, close. And six of Swords. Where are you? Here it is, Six of Swords. You see, I mean, it's it's a rite of passage. It's kind of very creatively depicted in this deck, but there's a rite of passage that the feminine is going through. When she gets to the other side, she'll be a completely different version of herself. You may feel like you're leaving people behind, you're leaving jobs behind, you're leaving family members behind, you're leaving friends behind, you're leaving your counterpart behind, you're leaving the old version of yourself behind. So it can really feel like you're peeling away those layers. But um, this is happening in order for you to um, really, you know, look, it's like, yes, this could feel like somewhat of a dark night, but, but a different kind of a dark night. You may feel this more physically than you felt the dark nights before. This is happening in order to clear your path, Divine Feminine. So again, I do feel the rain, the thunderstorms um, that are going to start to maybe occur. And as that occurs in our physical reality, it's going to be clearing things out. Remembering also that this jaguar is associated with both earth and rain. So the cleansing of the water, the cleansing of the energy, the cleansing of the thoughts, the belief systems, who we thought we were so that we can become who we are. You guys are mirroring. There is a mirroring. It's just happening in a different way with the feminine and the masculine. Masculine is working on breaking ancestral patterns. Yes, we talked about this breaking free, especially from where it comes to pleasing others, people pleasing their parents, society, etc. Ancestral patterns, healing, rewriting the future. So you guys, again, look, I mean, you guys are doing some very powerful work at this time, very powerful work indeed. And what this is doing is it's freeing um, future, it's freeing future, um, divine counterparts um it's it's starting to clear the path the path the way is going to become clear here 
for those that are following the first waivers. Um, those of you who are second or third waivers, new on this journey or just newly understanding this journey, um, you will have an easier time because of the path that's been laid forward by the, the OGs, um, by the, the first waivers. And we are all, we're in the midst of a, like a turnover, okay? We're in the midst of turning the page um, as a humanity, as a collective. I hope you guys can understand why I'm focusing more on the collective and not just Twin Flames. There's a bigger picture here. There's a bigger audience um, that I need to be speaking to in regards to what it is that we're traversing and walking through, why this is happening. Um, this is very important work that we're all doing now and I need to expand the horizons. Um, it's part of my mission. I'm, I'm really being forced into it. I don't have a choice. Um, my guides are very adamant and very important to listen to the guides right now because again, this is an initiation process for the divine feminine. There's an awakening process for the divine masculine. Um, he's starting to, to break the chains, but he's doing this internally first and then it will be activated externally. I hope you guys have a beautiful day. Uh, I am going to be on vacation Thursday through Sunday and then I'm back um, and I'll, I'll, I'll be back. But for those uh, four days, I will be, um, I'm gonna try to have some videos pre-recorded for you guys so that you can have some information and knowledge because this is really an important time. But I wish you guys the best getting through this week and I will see you soon. Take good care.